Welcome back, everyone. Earlier, I had the chance to talk to Ned Ryan. He's CEO of American Majority and the author of the new book, Restoring Our Republic, about the oppressive administrative state and what we can do to break it up. Take a look. Joining me now, author of Restoring Our Republic and founder and CEO of American Majority, Ned Ryan. Ned, um, I'm so excited to talk to you about this book because I think it, it goes to the heart Appreciate of so it. many issues that, that we've been talking about on this show right. for, for really since the beginning of the show in terms of what I describe as positive populism. Just set out for us really, would you first of all, the, the kind of the historical background to this book? Yeah, so no, the whole, the whole idea of this book was again having to deal with this very aggressive socialism we're seeing today and, and understanding that's antithetical to the founding, it's deeply un-American, but do we even know where we've come from? And mm -hmm. so really wanted to lay out really the genesis for the, the American Republic. Where did the founders find the vision? Where did they get the ideas? How did they construct the machinery of the Republic, which is an important mm -hmm. idea I'd, I'd love to discuss more about. And then it really kind of does lay the groundwork. And in the first chapter, I kind of explain, it really helps understand what we're experiencing today. And mm -hmm. the seeds of that were 100 years ago, mm -hmm. when progressives dropped an administrative state inside of our constitutional republic. And I lay out in the first chapter how... Oh, slow, down, slow down. That's such an important step in the argument. It so, is. So who do you mean by the progressives? So progressives, it was a movement that began late, teen, uh, late 1900s, early 20th century. Yeah. And their whole governing philosophy was to build a massive bureaucracy and administrative state to advance human progress. And I, and I juxtapose it against the founders who I call optimistic realists. Right. They are very realistic about human nature, imperfect human nature, uh -huh. should never be trusted with consolidated power. Right. But they were optimistic that they could create a government that was powerful enough to be a steward of our natural rights, but not too powerful to take them away. Whereas the progressives put their faith in kind of experts and managers and government and, and government. Alleged, educated okay. you can actually draw a line between Woodrow Wilson mm -hmm. and Lieutenant Colonel Vindman mm -hmm. and this whole philosophy that it's an educated That's quite elite. A lot. I'm not sure anyone's done that. Right, exactly but it's an right, educated it's elite that makes the decisions and that's, right. that's not what the founders intended. And so I call the progressives utopian status. They were incorrect right. on the imperfect nature, uh, human nature, yep. and they believe that you should consolidate power to advance human progress. That right. really is what we're experiencing today. And I, and I Can lay I just this ask you a question about that? Because it seems to me that that is, I mean, that's something really close to my heart, and that is very fundamentally anti-democratic because it Absolutely. means that the decisions are made by these experts who are appointed rather than people who are elected and accountable to the people. Two very different governing philosophies, administrative state, constitutional but can republic. can I just ask why the judicial branch and the guardians of the constitution right. allowed this to happen? How did uh, that happen? Well, it was kind of a whole process in which I believe the legislative, the executive, and even the judicial is actually part of advancing the progressive ideal of an administrative state. If you look at the history of judicial activism, uh -huh. But it was really the, the executive and legislative ceding power to this administrative state. And this is where I explain to people, when you give this administrative state, this massive bureaucracy, so much power, all of what we're seeing today makes sense. In fact, the last three years make yes. complete sense when you understand a powerful administrative state filled with powerful yes. bureaucrats think they decide. And I tell people, well, this is why Donald so Trump, when he showed up, he said, all power flows from the people. I'm the duly yes. elected representative of the people by the means laid out by the Constitution. And the administrative actor said, we don't think so. We think we're, just, we're, we're yes. the ones that decide. But the reason, I mean, I'm so excited to hear you speak like this, because it, it captures that feeling that people had, which right. is why they elected Donald Trump, which is up until then, it felt like it doesn't matter who we vote for, you get the same policies. So I lay this out in the opening chapter of the book in which I say for these administrative actors and many in D.C. who I think find democracy wildly inconvenient, right. the elections are dates on a calendar that come and go, quaint notions of a republic gone away, yeah. but they remain and they stay. And I've had them tell political appointee, bit of buddies that were political appointees, You'll come and go, okay. but we will still be here making decisions after you go. All right, so I hope we'll have lots more time to dig into all of this, but we're, we're, we're short of time now, so I just want you to tell the audience quickly, what's the recommendation, what's your simple solution to dealing with the administrative state? So Donald Trump, he wants to drain the swamp, the foundation of the swamp is the administrative state. I think that the only way you can restore the American Republic is to break apart the administrative state. In the last chapter, I make recommendations. We've got to shut down departments. You got to break up the Leviathan, plant it around various parts of the country. To move it out of Washington. You got to move it out of DC, and you got to take these 800,000 non essential federal government employees, and you've got to migrate them into the private sector. We now have six or seven million job openings thanks to Donald Trump's policy. So there are some reform steps in this last chapter, but I encourage people if you want to know where we came from, how far we've drifted, how we get back to re restoring our republic. I am so excited to hear this. I'm really, really can't wait to get into the detail of all of that, especially that assault on the administrative right. state and how we try and advance that cause, particularly thinking about what uh, could well be a second Trump, term. Second term, second exactly. term of Trump has to be all there about go, that. Ned. Fantastic. Thank Thanks, you so Steve. much. Appreciate it.